Hey guys, MJ the Student Tech Tree and in this video we're going to be looking at the various types of businesses and this is for subject CT2 financial reporting. So business, what do we mean when we talk about a business? Now if we look at the word, I mean business we see busyness and we can kind of gather that it's an entity formed in order to do some sort of work. And there's many various ways we can uh, categorize businesses. We can split them by um, non-profit businesses, such as charities and religious organizations, or for-profit businesses, which this video is going to focus on. We can also split businesses by legal entities and non-legal entities. And I want to start with the simple non-legal entities, and the very first one being that of the sole trader. An interesting thing about the sole trader is that you can become one right now. If you stand up and say, hey, I'm a sole trader, my business is to do this, then congratulations, that's all you need to do in order to form a sole trader. And how it's going to work is that you're going to be, well, what we're going to see with all these businesses is two main positions. One is what's their legal position and what's their tax position. As a sole trader, um, it's, you're basically working under your own name, and so you'll be taxed uh, normal personal income tax, and if you do anything wrong or you take out any debt, you'll be personally held responsible for it. And this is quite a nice form of business. I mean, the guy who just buys uh, vegetables and sells them on the street corner, or someone who sets up a private uh, consultancy company, um, these are all various examples of people who can choose the sole trader um, path. Um, what people have found out, though, is that sometimes two heads are better than one, and they'll team up with each other. And this is what we call a partnership. And again, a partnership is a non-legal entity. If it makes any mistakes, the partners are to be blamed, and the partners are taxed like any personal um, person would be. And the idea of the partnership is that, um, again, it's not a legal entity, but it is recommended to form a partnership agreement so that if there ever are any disputes, um, you can return to some sort of written form that you can use to you know, come to some sort of conclusion. And various companies or businesses that use the partnership structure are your accounting firms, um, legal firms, most professions generally have a, a partnership thing going. And what's cool about the partnerships, or I mean, you might say, why, why go into a partnership if you're legally responsible? It kind of adds an element of trust. So if you're going in and you're saying, hey, we're going to do your accounting for you, um, and if we mess up, we're personally responsible, your client is going to feel, okay, these guys are going to do a great job because if they mess up, they're responsible for it. That being said, a lot of people have done partnerships and they have failed spectacularly in the past. Okay, now let's move on to the legal uh, entities. This is where you actually go take a piece of paper, you create a legal document and you write out what your business is going to do. Um, in some countries it's known as the Memorandum of Association and you send this to the Registrar of Companies or some sort of government institution which then recognizes you. This thing gives you legal protection. Um, so if something happens to the business or something goes wrong, uh, the business is liable and your personal assets are, are safe. Although if negligence can be um, you know, proved, then you're still in trouble. And the idea with, uh, with these companies is you get two main types. You get the public company and the private company. The public company, they offer shares to the general public. It's traded either on the stock market and you know, the shareholders can trade their shares and they normally employ professional managers and there's a board of directors and there's quite a lot of hierarchy structures in place and, and all those sort of things. You also then get the private companies which are not available for the public, have private investors and but generally they kind of do the, the same thing. They're also protected by the legal entity. And then there's a different sort of tax position. So they all incur company tax um, rules and regulations. Uh, a little fun fact is if companies do something wrong, they can't be sent to jail. Uh, instead, they are just fined. And 
this opens up the door for a little bit of a moral hazard because, I mean, when we look at companies that have, you know, done illegal things in the past, sometimes the fines aren't large enough to deter, you know, this sort of activity happening again in the future. But the rest of the stuff, I mean, you can just read for yourself in your textbook. I mean, there is a lot of material on uh, the types of businesses. I mean, Wikipedia, all the Act Ed notes are great resources. But I just want to end this video by saying, how are we going to be looking at businesses in the future? Now that we have companies like Kickstarter and all these other various online platforms that allow people to back businesses that they believe in, do we need a new form of business? A business that is you know small enough so that it's a sole trader but can get you know public backers behind them and issue some sort of shares but without having to go through the whole regulation um, thing in order to get listed on the stock market so we might be seeing a new form of business uh, being created soon and this is not I mean it's not, nothing new creating a new form of business we will see I mean here in South Africa we had something called a closed corporation and I know in London, well, in the UK, they set up something similar in 2001. So we might be seeing new forms of business develop, um, you know, just to react to this whole global interconnection that we're getting through the internet. And uh, I mean, Kickstarter, I mean, Kickstarter at the moment, you're not getting shares in the business, but there are going to be various types of Kickstarters where in return for backing, you do get a slice of equity. So it's definitely an exciting field to keep an eye on. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's all we're going to chat about now. I'm now going to look, in the next videos, we're going to be looking at medium and short-term funding. If you're keen to learn more about long-term funding, check out my previous video, which was done on the capital market. But yeah, that's all I've got time for today. So thanks, guys, so much for watching. Cheers.